some goodies. Oh, did you press live? Yeah. Oh, we're live, everyone. We are actually doing a Facebook Live right now, so you guys are going to be on Facebook. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Gigi. And I am Tara. And this is Book, Book to, to Plate. Plate. So <laughs> Book to Plate is actually one of our YouTube shows that we have on YouTube, obviously. And we started it four years ago. Mm -hmm. It's incredible to think how long it's been going on because we've had yeah. so much fun doing it. Um, and basically, I mean, we'll give you guys a little background on who we are first, just to show our credibility, haha, -ha. and then we'll jump right into our presentation. Yeah, so Gigi, go first. Sure, so <laughs> I'm Gigi, Gigi Dubois. Um, I recently got married, so it's Ashworth now. But uh, I started my YouTube and my blog about five years ago. Five years ago, It's called Gigi Eats Celebrities. And I used to make fun of diet and fitness trends of celebrities, but it's since morphed into a food blog because I have a lot of food allergies and I felt like I could connect to my audience way more if I spoke about those types of things. So I can't eat like everything. Um, that being said, you know, I started making recipes that are quote GG approved. I make YouTube videos every single week on a, and I post them on my blog on Tuesday. And um, I met Tara because I was just randomly on the internet because what you're supposed to do when you have a blog and a YouTube channel, you really have to engage with other people. So I found her blog and I messaged her because she lived in Hollywood and that's where we're from. And we got together and the rest is history. Uh, yeah, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm Tara, as some of you may have seen yesterday. I also do um, the social media for WCR here, which is great. So I started my, um, my food blog, The Food Pervert, um, about seven years ago, because um, I've always loved food and cooking and photography and writing, so it was just a really great outlet for me to share recipes, dining reviews, all that kind of stuff, and within that, oops, um, <laughs> I also, because when you have a blog, you have to be responsible for promoting it, and the best most efficient way to do that is through social media. So that was really my crash course in social media and learning how to promote myself um, and connect with other foodies online, on the internet, everywhere. Um, so yeah, so also in addition to doing my own blog, I represent other food brands and I help them grow their social media, which is really awesome because I love both of those things being combined together. Uh, so yeah, and the thing is when Gigi and I met, we, even though we have completely different diets, um, as she said, she has a lot of allergies. We don't eat a lot of the same food, but we, but we do find things that we do agree on and that we can eat together, like sushi. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but I eat everything. So She's my taste tester, basically. Yeah. So what happened is we came together, and initially, we'll show you our, our first ever video. It was very interesting, because it was a taste test, actually, because even though uh, my diet is very limited, you know, it's of the healthier variety and stuff. I got all these products that are healthy, but I still couldn't eat them. But I wanted her to try and see if she liked healthier alternatives. Um, that being said, then we sort of, you know, butted, not butted heads, excuse me, we started brainstorming and we're like, what can we do together? Because we just had this connection, we loved food so much, our, our dads both love food, I don't know, we, we have a very weird connection. But it's interesting <laughs> how similar we are. And we decided we were going to create something called Book to Plate, where we recreate celebrity dishes from their cookbooks to see if they actually taste good. Now, we put our own little spin on it because she's a food pervert, so she likes to perv it up a little bit. I'm Gigi Eats Celebrities, and I eat celebrities, haha. But uh, I, I make them healthier, or as I said earlier, Gigi approved. And uh, so then we had two variations, and then... Well, I thank you, internet. I don't know what that was, but sure. Um, so yeah, that's basically what Book to Plate is, and we've, as I said, been doing it for four years now. Yeah, and so what we really want to share with you guys today is how you can promote yourselves if you're a private chef, if you're a food writer, if you're a food photographer, whatever realm you are in the business, how you can promote yourself through all the different facets of social media. Um, and we're gonna start with YouTube because that's the main thing we do with our cooking video. So yeah. if anyone here has ever thought about doing a cooking video, we want you to know that it's very easy. You don't have to have fancy equipment. Mm -mm. When we first started, we used a laptop. Like it was just very basic. The, yes. the important thing though is just getting started. So we will show you, I think, a yes. little one of our very okay. first things. We'll show you one of our very first videos. Let me go over here really quickly. Uh, we'll show you it's very, uh, low quality, if you will. Um, maybe I should just, I don't think it's on this playlist, so we'll just have to go Hi everyone, back. I'm Gigi. Oh, sorry, Gigi that's, not, that's not the video. My apologies. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you can see, I have a lot of videos um, since I've been doing this for so long. But Tara and I started, let's see. You'll see it pops out because it's very poor quality. But you still have to get your personality out there, so it's worth it. Where's 
the Cameron Diaz one. Oh, oh, there, this is this one. The snacks will have healthier choices right here. Oh, that's our very first one. That's the very first one. It has 17,000 views. That's great. Um, so we have not watched this video in a very long time. But Notice I look completely different. I have long brown hair. <laughs> This was Welcome four years ago. Yeah, this was four years ago. This was shot on a video camera that she had stacked on top of stacked on top of uh, shoe boxes and books and a uh, coffee table. So it was very just running like it was just very uh, sporadic and we just wanted to get our video out there because we just knew we had some sort of connection. Um, that being said. We also didn't have any audio, which like that's I another thing a lot of people uh, would critique this video on. That I want to make but with bacon cheeseburgers. <laughs> we also showcased our personality right off the bat. We showcased the fact that she's a food pervert. She really likes, you know, to get down and dirty with the food. And I'm of the healthier variety trying to introduce this food pervert for to something healthier. So we can run healthier. Were you screaming at you when you were eating this satellite? Yeah, they were screaming. <laughs> oh my god, we, we yeah, talked about the funniest part. Uh, <laughs> yes. So that was our first ever video, but it's just an example for all of you that you can make video anywhere. You can use your phone, you can use your laptop, you can use every anything that really records video. Yes, um, the important thing is just getting started. So is there anyone out here today who either has maybe thought about wanting to do a YouTube channel or, okay, okay great. Good. Awesome, and awesome, I see some hands, that's great. Because getting yourself out on video is the best approach these days because people like to see your personalities. Mm -hmm. They like to see who you are, how you talk, and, and you know, there's something about just watching someone else talk, that nonverbal communication, where you can see if they're really genuine. A lot of people comment on my videos or my blog saying, I love how open, honest, and real you are. You're, and then they meet me in person, and they're like, "You're literally the exact same person that I see on camera." And that is something that hopefully you'll learn a little bit in this in this uh, little demonstration we have today, because I, we're going to teach you, you know, how to feel as comfortable as possible in front of that camera. Mm -hmm. So, and just be yourself. Exactly. Um, and also something that's important is how are you going to stand out, like. What can you bring that's different mm -hmm. from everyone else? So do your research, you know, watch, go on YouTube for like two hours and like really search food videos. Yeah. See what other people are doing. See how, well, okay, I still want to do, you know, a baking videos, but how is my personality different than all the other yeah, baking what is your specialty? Like for Tara, mm -hmm. you know, she's the food pervert. She looks for the perviest foods out there. Myself, I'm very quirky, outgoing, and bubbly, and I'm like, whoa, in your face all the time, and people don't know what to expect with that. Yet I also create some outside of the box recipes. For instance, you know, I'll make uh, macaroni and cheese, but I'll make it vegan, dairy free, gluten free, soy free, nut free, egg free, everything free, <laughs> because I can't eat anything. Um, so I j it's just, we have our specific niches, and I think that really, really helps people uh, figure out whether or not they want to follow you. Um, and it's just, that's very important as well, because if you do too much of a broad overview, you're actually going to get so overwhelmed yourself that you potentially might not want to post anymore because you're just like, I don't know where to go, I don't know what direction. I have met so many people who have that problem and you know they come to me for advice just because I have such a focus and you know it, it, takes, it takes a while to figure it out. You just really have to write down a list of the things that you're absolutely passionate about and how you could potentially twist them together. Yeah. And you guys, just so you know, we do have handouts that we're going to give yeah, you at the end of this session with a lot of this information typed up. We just want you right now to just enjoy, watch, don't think about all the details until afterwards. Exactly. Um, so. But so first we're going to start with a YouTube breakdown of sort of some specifics, so which yeah. Gigi is very familiar with. I'm going to let her do that spiel. All right, <laughs> all right. Yeah, YouTube is the biggest search engine on uh, the internet right now, and it is overflowing with content so it's really 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 hard to find videos it's almost obnoxious um, YouTube is cracking down though on certain channels and making things not able to upload anymore because there's just too much content out there and the problem also with YouTube though is they are constantly changing so what works you know today might not work in a year from now for instance but you just kind of have to maybe um, subscribe to one of those YouTube newsletters just so you're up 
up with the, with the times, if you will. But one thing that's never going to change is your titles, your tags, and your body text. They all have to line up. So if you are making cookies, you say, the best ever chocolate chip cookies. That's a great title, but then within your body, you write, these are the best ever chocolate chip cookies because, and then in your tag, you have to write the best ever chocolate chip cookies. They just all have to line up. It really helps SEO optimization for YouTube to find these videos and it coming up in like the first, second, third results. Um, that being said, there are probably billions of people out there with the best chocolate chip uh, recipe ever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, making it a little bit more specific, like the best ever chocolate chip with walnut cookie recipe, that sort of thing. Uh, you just kind of have to think outside of the box a little bit. My problem when I first started YouTube is I, I think I'm so funny. So I like to make really quirky titles and I'm like, these chocolate chip cookies are gonna make your mouth water, like that type of thing, which I mean, I guess that would be a good title, but I just really- It's harder to search. Yeah, I thought way too outside of the box because I would always search for like food puns and I would put a food pun in there, it just didn't work. So be very straightforward on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then also utilize that body text. I'm talking write paragraphs, write a whole blog post in there. If you don't plan on having a blog, write your blog post in that body text because that is so good for SEO as well. Yeah, all and those keywords are gonna pop up in that yeah. paragraph describing your video and that's how people are gonna find it. And honestly, use fifth grade grammar in English. <laughs> Don't go crazy and like, you know, write an essay from for college graduates or whatever you, you're writing. Don't write a dissertation in your uh, YouTube channel. Just write fifth grade language because that is what YouTube is searching for because Unfortunately, a lot of people just aren't educated, and that's just what they're looking for. Um, that being said, when you make videos, always plug yourself and like, hi everyone, I'm so and so, and this is my channel. And then when you're on YouTube, you can actually annotate your video, and you can, you know, make a little, um, a little tagline or not tagline, but it has your name. Um, and then you can link to your blog that way or link to your other social media channels and that sort of thing. And then YouTube also has end cards where you can do the exact same thing. And it makes it very user friendly. So people will just click on it, they'll go right to your channels, wherever you're uh, pointing them to, and they can learn more about you and then potentially follow you. And mm -hmm. always at the end of your videos, even in the beginning of your videos, anywhere in your videos, just say, Please, I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Yeah, tell them what you want to do. Exactly. Um, also, posting consistently yes. is a big deal, and that is something Gigi's very good about. I am not the greatest. I'll be like, I post videos on my, my own channel, but it's kind of whenever I feel like, like, oh, I'll make a video about this and I'll post it. Um, but I don't have the same numbers because Gigi's really great, and she posts every single Tuesday. And that consistency is what's really going to bring in a following yeah. and they know what to expect. They know every single, you know, every Tuesday at this time, she's gonna post a video, so Tasty I'm gonna go Tuesday. and watch it. Yeah, <laughs> That's Tuesday. what I like to call it, at least. Um, yeah, I am very weird and regimented. I guess I have to thank my parents for that. <laughs> but yeah, just consistency. And you know, on your YouTube channel, there's also an about section where you can write, you know, every Tuesday, I'm gonna be uploading a video, don't forget. And that, and they can turn on notifications on YouTube as well, and get emails to be notified and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay, so that was a good uh, information on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Instagram. Do you want to take a Insta question stories. over there real quick? Oh yes. Just a quick one. With I, mean, I am absolutely YouTube ignorant. Can you, like, you say you post every Tuesday? Yes. Could you have say you know I know I'm going to be having a crazy three or four weeks. Can you do them in advance of time? Of oh, yes. You can okay. schedule Thanks. all of your videos, which is phenomenal. YouTube came out with that, I think, maybe two years ago, which has been just life-saving. Um, for instance, I have a video going up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., so everything is scheduled. And you can make so many videos in advance. In fact, I recommend that you do so it's less stressful. That one day where you might be making all the videos, you might be like, oh, my gosh. But you're going to thank yourself. You are going to thank yourself. So I have like four videos in the queue right now and it makes me really happy because I'm like, oh, I don't have to film a video for a little while. So yeah. Awesome. So, oh, yes. so when you do that, do you, and this may be a silly question, but nothing do silly. you wear different clothes and stuff? Yes, and make it I do. I change my outfits, although my audience knows me as 
the girl who really does not care what she looks like. So I could wear the exact same outfit for every video and no one would care. Um, because that's not what they're there for, uh, in my eyes at least. Yeah. Um, but you, uh, yeah, change your outfit every video. That's perfectly acceptable. I mean, just, you know what I said. Just of course. Look like I mean, Tara, yeah. yeah. Exactly. We yeah. do that. We'll we do shoot that videos on the same day. We'll do two in a day. And we'll just, yeah, change our outfit. Yeah. And, and maybe day. change we'll your hair or something again. like yeah. that. Yeah. Actually, we'll show you, um, our latest video at the end of this presentation and actually we filmed another video on the exact same day and we just completely changed our outfits. So, yeah. Okay, any other YouTube questions? Yes. I don't want to get too hung up in technicality. That's okay. What if you make a mistake or you want to make a do-over? When do you do your editing? At the end. So basically what happens is we'll film a video. For instance, we're filming a video right now. I would take this footage and I would bring it into the, pro uh, the program I use called Final Cut Pro, which we're going to get to in a minute. Um, and I would do editing that way. However, you don't necessarily have to edit your videos. I mean, if you mess up, you're human. So yeah. everyone is not perfect, and they almost expect you to have errors. For me, what I, my, my thing is I love jump cuts because I am the type of person that has ADD, and I'm like, oh, I need a different thing every five seconds. So in my videos, everything's a jump cut when there's a little mistake. I, I cut out ums or uh or whatever, those, like, <laughs> those weird awkward pauses sometimes. Um, but yeah, our videos have progressed tremendously since day one, and I say keep in some mistakes if you want, because I think it's more fun. <laughs> and then just laugh at yourself, you know? Yeah. And YouTube is the place. I mean, you don't have your own blog. No, no, I do. Um, basically, my blog is my home for my YouTube videos, so I have a lot of subscribers and readers on my blog. Um, and everyone knows that my videos are going to be on my blog, so that's where they go for them. I have made it such uh, that that is the case. I started my blog before my YouTube channel because I wanted to build a bit of an audience before I started the YouTube. Um, so yeah, I have a blog, and that's where all of my interaction happens. I get 100 to 200 comments per video and blog post each week, and it's just engaging. Ask, ask people questions. That's what people like. Ask them questions, and they're so they're going to answer them. Yeah. Is this your full time job? It's my full time job. Yes. Um, I I've been blessed with uh, brands reaching out to me, and they want to work with me. Thus, we you know start collaboration, conversation, and we come up with a budget and that sort of thing. And that's something you can get to if you start building your channels. That yeah. is consistency. If you start, start with, with the consistency you. and you showcase the fact that you have interaction on your blog and a, a great loyal following, then yes, you can make it a full time job. Yeah. I have a question because I am uh, leaning towards email more. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's less. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I understand yeah. that. So completely. What, do you have any uh, recommendations? What do you think? Because you know. You, uh, Vimeo is great for more professional videos. That's what I think. It's a lot less. Um, it's a lot less searched though. So you okay. you're definitely yeah. going to get less views on Vimeo than you will on YouTube. For instance, a lot of musicians they have you know. Uh, I don't know, Neo, that just randomly popped in my head. He's a rapper, if you guys don't know. Neo, and then it has Vimeo afterwards. So he has a Vimeo channel, but he brought it onto YouTube because he knows that that is where the action happens. Yeah. So, so audience-wise, audience -wise, YouTube, YouTube is the best, <coughs> yeah. best bet. So yeah. Okay, great. We're going to move on to Instagram, everybody. Woo! Um, so Instagram now, as some of you may know, has a live streaming feature as well as Insta Stories. Now, Insta Stories are great. They're just seven short seconds of video, but that's also a way you could technically do a little cooking segment that way. I do that sometimes when I'm at home if I'm just cooking dinner, but I want my audience to know what I'm doing, and it's a really easy way to just because you can, you know, type a little font on there. So I'll, you know, pan over my, you know, boiling pasta and be like, oh, we're getting ready for my spaghetti carbonara. And or you can write the ingredients list right yeah, on there. Yeah, you can list the ingredients on your Insta story too. So if you just want to start posting videos in a super casual way where you're not worried about editing and I got uploaded to YouTube and ah, that seems so scary. Um, you can literally just take your phone and just do little tiny segments um, describing what you're doing. You can also, you know, do selfies like, okay, you guys, now I'm going to put it in the oven. Here we go. Yay. You know, very, it's very easy. And people, people really like the casualness of Instagram. Like they like seeing like, oh, this girl's just in her kitchen at home. She's a normal person like I am. Exactly. You know? People really find that relatable. 
Um, and also with Instagram, it's a really great promotional tool, especially for food. As I'm sure a lot of you know, if you have Instagrams, you probably follow a lot of foodie people because um, it's a very, very big commodity. Um, so it's a great way to showcase your recipes. It's a great way to advertise your recipes, to also call them to your YouTube channel, um, to your blog, to wherever you're posting your video content. Um, it's just a really great marketing tool. Also, you can post up to one minute of a video um, as opposed to a photo. It's not an Insta story, but it's an actual video you can post to your YouTube as well, which can either be a teaser like, hey, you guys, remember to check out my YouTube tomorrow. We're doing chocolate bundt cakes or whatever you're going to do. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, so, yeah, and let's see. You can link um, in your bio, in your Instagram, to that video, to your blog, to wherever you want to promote. So when you do your little Insta story, like every Tuesday morning, I will make either a YouTube video myself or I'll just take a screenshot of my blog post and be like, hey, guys, this is up. Check out the bio at Gigi Eats because that's my YouTube channel or my uh, Instagram channel. And they'll go over and click and it's amazing. I have generated so much traffic from Instagram alone and it's definitely a tool that you guys def need to really get involved with if you're trying to promote yourself. And those Insta yeah. stories, don't be afraid of them. You don't have to do the selfies either. If you don't want to be on camera, take a picture of this table and write some text and tag people or yourself or whatever and it works. An Insta story only lasts, an Insta story only lasts 24 hours. So here, I it's like Snapchat, yes, yes, but Snapchat. so basically if you're on Instagram, I'm on Instagram right now, you might not be able to see this, but there's a beautiful donut by the way because I only follow food people. Um, <laughs> on the upper right corner right here, there's a little camera and that's a camera, so it's showing all of you. And I could honestly press this right now. We can make an Insta Look, story. Look, we're making now. an Insta story right now. It's it's just it's crazy. It's like Inception right here. There's Tara, and now we're just gonna go back, and then it'll replay, and then you can press this little arrow, press to your story, and then send, and then it's on your story, and it's gonna be there for the next 24 hours. And what's the benefit of that over a post? The po the po the problem with post is you cannot link to anything. Sure, you can say, hey, go check out my bio, but people can't click on anything. They can yeah. click on your name, sure, but they're more likely to click on the at, whatever your name is, within the story. Mm -hmm. It's I don't know why, it's just that's what happens. I know yeah. I do it, and it's translated a lot on my blog. Um, so I just, it's something that you need to test out for yourself and see if it works for you, and but it definitely works. Yeah, and again, it's also something if you know, like tomorrow you're gonna do an Insta story, that's another thing, you, you can promote that as well. You tell your followers, hey you guys, remember tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'm gonna start doing an Insta series on um, <laughs> the Insta I Insta stories. Yeah, yeah, but another thing though too with, that's great is if you actually like the video you're doing, you can, you can save, save it. it. Mm -hmm. And then you can also save your entire story. Yeah. So for instance, I've taken over a lot of brands' uh, Instagram stories. So I took over something called Fiverr and another protein powder, whatever. So what I would do is at, at the end of that day, I would save that entire story and I would obviously send it to the brand to showcase the fact that I did it for them. And I've actually uploaded it to YouTube, one of my most recent videos. I uploaded my entire Insta story to YouTube and it was my YouTube video for the week. Yeah, and it, it was a great like you know behind the scenes of my life uh, what I'm doing with these recipes that sort of thing so you got to just really get creative with it too I mean it's obviously gonna be a little bit of a learning curve initially because it's it might be new to some of you uh, but it's it's an amazing tool I'm obsessed with Instagram yeah. I love it I almost love it more than YouTube to be completely honest yeah and then also last thing really quick because we do want to make a recipe for you guys today so you can kind of see what we actually do when we do these videos and we've got our lovely Cuisine Art sponsor today. Yes. Um, but so last thing really quick, Facebook Live, which is what we set up today, which we actually haven't started doing a lot yeah, of, but we we'd like it. to start doing it. Um, so for example, all the past few days, we let our followers know, watch us live right now. You can tune in 10 a.m. 
Monday morning, we're at the WCR conference, so we have people who are fans who are watching this right now, which is awesome. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, but at the same time, this video will be uploaded and saved, and you can on, save on, it. on Facebook. I was going to so say it. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah, so then anytime. people can watch it whenever they want. So, for instance, a lot of my friends and family, they were like, oh, what time is it? But, you know, they're at work right now. So they're not going to be able to watch it until later, but it'll be up on the Internet later on Facebook. And video actually gets more engagement on Facebook than pictures or a one sentence about you know whatever you're doing so mm -hmm. I highly recommend you guys all start using uh, Facebook live as well uh, even if you just uploaded a little video too that get, gets more engagement than photos or that one sentence blurb of hey good morning everyone so yeah. that's uh, an amazing tool right there and we'll obviously have an example when we're done here and you guys can all rewatch this as well if you guys need to and take notes. you can see well if we have time at the end we can talk a little bit about equipment too but like we bought this little tripod and an iPhone, um, whatever it is. A tripod holder. A holder I, thing. Yeah, that thing. We're very technical. <laughs> um, like, we just bought this at Best Buy, and it's awesome. It fit in the suitcase. It gets really small. So there's all kinds of ways you can do this affordably, where you're not investing. You know, you don't have to buy a bunch of fancy equipment. You literally just need a tripod in your phone. Exactly. For 20 bucks. And or look, your well. arm, that's a great selfie stick. Just or saying. It. <laughs> um, all right, so we did want to do a recipe for you guys today since we are in Seattle. Um, and what we do is we recreate chef recipes. So we figured we're in Seattle. Renee Erickson just had a book come out. So we are going to be making her rose petal harissa this morning. And if you guys want to taste it, it is our first time making it. That is something else <laughs> so. I want to tell you. We actually never make the recipes before we make YouTube videos because we like that organic, uh, you know, when we're tasting it, if it's not good, we'll be like, oh, oh, okay. Uh, we might, we may have made a mistake or maybe it just is not something our palate likes. And then uh, we make modifications or we recommend some other ways to tr transform the dish, that kind of thing. Are you looking for the chilies? Yeah, I was looking for the chilies. I do believe they're right here. Um, they were leaking in our bag, everyone. Yes, we had a very interesting time. So we had to soak dry chilies overnight. You want Which to see this we did in our hotel room with the <laughs> with the ice machine. We stuck chilies in them, so that was fun. So when we're making this, you guys are more than welcome to ask any sort of questions. I know you guys have questions about editing and that sort of thing. And as I said, I actually went to broadcast journalism school, so I learned how to use Final Cut Pro when I was in school. Um, so that is my mainstay right now. However, Final Cut Seven is what I use, and it is no longer in existence. It's now Final Cut 10, which has completely transformed. Um, there are other um, different uh, ways you can edit. You can use iMovie, obviously. You can use Avid. You can use Premiere. There's tons of different programs you can use out there. You can even use your iPhone. There are apps that you can use, and it's very simple. iMovie. Yeah, there's a lot of apps on there. I have a, a bunch of apps, and you can even like crop your videos. You can um, have nice filters, that sort of thing. But yeah, what and apps for your phone? Let's see. I have what I have. Well, there's um, there's the iMovie app. Yeah, the yeah, iMovie app. app. Yeah. And then I have Splice. Splice is one of my favorite video apps, and you can film like four different videos and bring it into your Splice app, and then you can combine them with nice little, you know, segues and crossfades and that sort of thing, which is fun. Is there a free app? It's free app. Oh. Yeah. I always download the free ones. You know. Uh, so yeah, that's. That's how I do uh, my editing. Uh, I'm obsessed with my Final Cut. And then uh, another thing about video, though, is if you want to get, yeah, we do have to get started. Um, oh, OK, well. But another thing about video, though, as well, is that um, you need, generally, when you get more advanced, you want not a better audio. And what you can do is, if you're using your, uh, your uh, computer, for instance, because I used my computer for the longest time to make video, and um, I plugged in this thing called a Yeti microphone. So all you got to do is get the little USB cord from the, the microphone to your computer, you plug it in, and it's golden. And the audio is perfect. So Yeti microphones are the best thing ever if you're using your computer. I now use lavalier mics when I use my current camera. Those are a little bit more challenging, and sometimes you need help uh, with someone who's helping you make the video, for instance. Um, but yeah, Yeti mics are a dream come true, and I'm sure there's some sort of adapter that you can get from the Yeti mic to go to a camera. So, okay, so we're making this recipe, and it looks like you know I'm texting someone on my phone, but I'm not. 
I'm actually using my phone to get the instructions of the recipe because even though some people associate holding your phone in your hand with not paying attention, use it as your recipe book. It's not a problem. Everyone uses their phone these days. Everyone's connected at the hip to, the, to their phone. It's like their baby. And we're not um, wasting paper. And we're not wasting any paper, exactly. So uh, basically what Tara is doing, she's cutting off the stems of all these chilies that we actually initially think were dehydrated. Yeah, and they were we, really dry. Yeah, we soaked them overnight and they expanded like times a million. Like you know those little, uh, what are they? Like, you put them in the bathtub and they explode. I don't know, it's really cool. It reminds me of my phone. What? Teflon. Yeah, Teflon. something like that. Um, okay, so what's okay? What are we place doing? all the chilies in a line. Um, we already did that. Are you on Instagram? You're typing on your Instagram story. Yeah, I'm. I'm not doing that currently right now. Are you just, just, you're just I'm just reading. Notes? I'm just reading the uh, recipe off of the internet right now. Oh, you're just reading. Yeah. Uh, so you're talking about her website, the uh, Renee website. Um, it's on a blog. Yeah. Yeah. So it's on all the. The caraway, cumin, coriander, and fennel seeds into a large um, into the blender. Yeah, and then we're gonna blend it. So we actually got all of these seasonings at um, Pike's Place Market, which is really yes. great. It was so fun. They have a great spice market. So if anyone's going on the Pike Place tour today, is anybody going on that one? Great. Yeah, Fantastic. you guys are gonna have a gonna phenomenal go, time. Yeah, over to there. the um, spice store because they had everything that we needed, even dried rose petals, which we were really worried about finding, but yeah, they have exactly. them, so fantastic. I've never even had dried rose petals before in my life. It smells like potpourri. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's edible, no, it, it is. All right, so what okay, herbs are we put all, um, You need the caraway, cumin, coriander, and fennel. Have you guys ever used any of those herbs and spices? Oh, what are your guys' favorite herbs and spices? Anyone have favorites? Fennel. Cumin, fennel, yeah. Lemongrass. Lemongrass. I was just in uh, Southeast Asia and they love the lemongrass over there. Am I supposed to use all of these? Um, no, but. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's See, the that's, that's another thing. When it's live, you can make mistakes. It's totally acceptable. It's funny. And, you know, it shows your true personality. Um, there are specific measurements, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you did not read them to me. <laughs> no, I did not. Um, wh what is that? The rose petals? I don't think we want to put that much of those in there because that would make it too Then it will taste like, like potpourri. Um, <laughs> I don't see them. One tablespoon dried rose petals. Okay, there you go. One tablespoon. She brought uh, her tablespoon measures and stuff. That was very smart of her. Tara's always on top of it. I mean, you guys have it too, but we I had no idea school. what was going to be uh, on you. Thank you. Um, okay, and then fennel, coriander, cumin, and caraway. Ooh, the cumin. Okay, the cumin. She How brought that from home. Um, cumin, one-fourth of that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. We're gonna, you know, eyeball these things. I mean, I get that herbs and spices are very, very healthy for you, Hope but for the best. So, do you guys have any questions? Yes. So, I mean, what would you say is the like was the turning point in with your channel and turning it into a profitable? Okay, so that's one way. So, what happened with me is. You know, I'm the type of person that my blog is my life, so I am constantly researching 24-7. Like, it's actually fun for me to do that, too. So I started applying and getting accepted to a lot of different um, communities. For instance, I'm a fitness, healthy food, living type of person, so there's something called Fitfluential out there that you can join, and then they send you sponsorship opportunities. Then, from there, I realized I don't need a middleman. I'm going to reach out to them myself. Plus, the middleman takes like 50%, if not more. Um, and I'm sorry, but you know, when you're trying to make this your full-time job, you need more than 100 bucks. Uh, so I decided to reach out to the brands myself. And I created a little cover letter, what's amazing about me, what makes me stand out, why, I, why they need me why they need me. That is the most important thing you need to answer in yeah. your email to them, why you are amazing and they need you. 
Um, so for me, you know, it's, I'm super quirky. I'm very memorable. Everyone always remembers. For instance, I'm obsessed with salmon. Every <laughs> single time someone eats salmon or goes to a restaurant and orders it, I get a Facebook message, an email, a text, an Instagram tagging me saying, I'm thinking of Gigi. Like, so I made it known that I'm obsessed with salmon. And that is something that, you know, you're going to find specific. your specifics that you can really um, promote. And then there's something else where I have um, a media kit where it tells a little blurb about me. It tells me my, it tells my stats. It tells me what I'm uh, available for. It also says, you know, a little bit about Tara too, since she's part of my life. And then it also says that I eat like six pounds of salmon a day. You know, just that fun little quirky fact. So you throw that in there with your email pitch to a brand. And a lot of times brands will say, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have a budget. And then you go, oh, okay, well, that's too bad. And you move on. Because so many bloggers and YouTubers are doing things for free right now. That brands, Which is okay if you're starting yeah, out. Yeah, it's okay. Everyone has to start somewhere. But okay. brands are taking advantage of that. Yeah. And they are basically, they basically consider your time and energy not worth monetary compensation, which to me, I think is a huge insult because we are all worth it. We all, you know, contribute our time and our energy and we even go to the supermarket to get X, Y, and Z ingredients and we're spending our, our hard earned dollars, but not making anything in return. So even if it's just a hundred dollars, even if it's $50, just you have to hold your ground and you have to say, no, I'm sorry, I'm ch I charge $50, at least so I can buy some ingredients, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You want to turn that on? All right. We're going to turn it on. Mix up these. Woo! And then we do a little dances when it's all mixed it around. <laughs> I love making recipes with this bad boy because then my arms don't have to do anything. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions? I can talk over this. I talk really loudly. Yeah. Uh, I certainly can, yeah. Okay, so what were you going to use so that you can actually put the recipe on? Okay, so when you make your Insta video, for instance, make a video right now if you can, if you know how to. Do you know how to? No. Okay, so on your Instagram, you can go right to your Instagram page like such. Okay. Everyone like this. And then in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little camera icon. Click on that, and it'll bring you to this, which is the live feed. And for instance, I'll just take a picture of my face, because sure, why not? And that's, that's me, that's an attractive photo, but who cares? Because uh, this is only an example. And then honestly, what you just do, click on it, and you can write. Okay. And so you can write your ingredients, and then you can list it, you can do whatever. When you get real crazy, you can put emojis if you want. But also, another thing is if, for instance, the lighting is weird in the video, or in the picture, you can actually click on this A that has a box around it, and make the writing legible because it gives that background so people can actually read it. For the longest time, I didn't even know that existed. She is the one who introduced me to that. And, I, and it's been life changing. <laughs> okay, sorry everyone, we're gonna... We're gonna whirl it away now. Okay. Lighting, natural lighting is best. I was blessed in my old kitchen with the best lighting from the window. That being said, you know, there are lighting kits on Amazon for 50 bucks that you can buy if you really want to get into it. Or you can, you know, take off the lampshade of a lamp and bring it closer to you. It's all about testing it. Now, um, my husband has his own production company, so he's got all the lighting in the world, which is great. But, you know, obviously not everyone is blessed with that. And it's just natural lighting is really the best route to ever take. So if you're not doing a cooking video, then you can get really close to the window and have a nice backdrop of in your living room or something like that. But if you're in the kitchen and you just have the ugliest overhead lights and give you, you know, dark circle under your eyes or whatever, um, I would really, really uh, invest in getting like a $50 lighting equipment on Amazon. And it can be delivered the next day because Amazon's amazing. <laughs> but that's not, you know. But the same thing goes for the right time of day. 
That too. So that's something else, actually. Very, very good point. So for me, I always make or I always film my videos at around 10:30, 11 o'clock in the morning because that's just the best lighting for me. Nighttime is terrible in my opinion because you know it's dark outside, it's dark inside. Then you have the fluorescent lights, and it's just it's not good. But of course, if your house is blessed with beautiful lighting. chagrin and uh, you know people think it's funny they they look at me and they think I'm like this cute little girl next door and then I'm like F and they're like whoa was not expecting that but in fact it actually reels more people in because they're like oh I don't know what else to expect so unpredictability is exactly very that's really really enticing I saw a question over here yeah Yeah. What about YouTube? On YouTube, it really is all about you being consistent and posting on the same day every week. And what about Instagram? Is that Instagram, there actually, if you set up your account to be a business account, you can actually monitor when it's yes. the best time for you. Um, and it's different for everyone. For me, it's best when I wake up, I, I work out every morning and I play on Instagram for like two hours. And I post at like eight o'clock in the morning every morning and that is when I get the most engagement because I've tried posting in the evening as well, but then I think people are stuck in traffic right now or driving home or they're having dinner with the family, so they're not really looking. And I've noticed that I get less engagement in the evening than in the morning. Yeah, but what's great is with a lot of these things, YouTube, Instagram, you can track your analytics as long as you're registered as a business and even Google Analytics. You can track everything and see like, oh, and this post performed better when I posted it this time as opposed to this time. Yeah. And on, there are um, analytics on YouTube helpful. as well that you, you don't have to be like a business account because I don't even think they have that, but you can check out all of those analytics too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are uh, programs that can report your everything you want. Oh yeah, there's a lot of websites like so, that too. Social rank. Yeah, social rank. Yeah, the ones that I really like. Good money. Really good. 
when you do your YouTube to have like titles on the video and make your, your thumbnails really pop because usually the best way to do it is with like a nice picture of food because everyone's like, ooh, that's good. But for me, I promote more of my personality than anything else, so I always have pictures of us together or, you know, just my face going, wee. And also, if doing a video by yourself seems really scary, do it with a friend. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. That definitely helps a lot. Delicious. <laughs> yeah, delicious. So the quality has definitely improved in the four years that we've been doing this. So this actually is with um, a brand new camera I just got, as well as lovelier mics, and there's some lighting involved here, and it's in my new kitchen. Yeah, so this is the most professional we've gone. Um, like we're saying, we started like with a laptop or just a camera propped up on, you know, shoe boxes. Yeah, lots of shoe boxes. I think I have uh, pictures of what that looked like on my Instagram from back in the day. So just know you can always work towards that if it's something you really want to do, really want to invest in. And of course, if you guys have more questions, comments, concerns, need advice, email me, email Tara. We're yeah. obviously always here to help you guys in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to taste this. Yeah, give it a little, give it a little taste, Tara. And then we... Okay. All right, is it? Is it? <laughs> See? We're real and honest and open so. right now. Hold on, your phone is doing something. I think it still needs to be blended. She's trying to see if you have Okay, you think it needs to still be blended, or what do you think it needs? There's some chunks of seeds. Okay, chunks of seeds, not necessarily the best, unless you love the spicy. Um, but yeah, this recipe had told us that it needs maybe 10, 10 minutes of blending, which is crazy, but that's what she recommended. So yeah, if you want to keep blending. How many of you have a YouTube channel right now? Okay. How often do you post on it? Not at all? You just kind of have it right now because you have a channel account? Are you... Yeah, sure. Are you going to go home and try and subscribe to... Or are you going to try and make YouTube videos yourself now? Alright, I like it. I'll have to subscribe to you and follow along and see your progression. <laughs> and this, by the way, was really delicious. I highly recommend you all make this recipe. Um, the thing that I do as well is in the description below, I actually have the recipe, but I also link to my blog because I have a blog post dedicated to this as well, which I can show you my blog. Girls right here, Yeah, and that's my personality, just, you know, being a little raunchy, but that's okay. So... That real quick. How long do you recommend um, videos for? Like, you know what's interesting is actually a lot of people are like two to five minutes because you know people's attention spans. Yeah. Yeah. However, I have found with my videos that I can go as, lo as long as ten minutes and I still have that audience because they know me as the girl who you never know what to expect kind of thing. Yeah, this and is like a cooking video. You and especially, this is yeah. Acceptable. One thing yeah. that we have done recently is, actually not recently, we've done this for a little while, we actually show our hands and shopping ingredients and that's what we do. It actually makes the video short. Yeah. So then I'll show you. So that's the blog post that is in corresponding with the video. Thank you, that was great. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed. Please contact Thank us if you, you guys have questions. Not a problem. Thanks so much.